Hey guys, it's the plant doctor here. I can't believe it's already August and we're doing our August to-do uh, video series here. So we're doing these once a month where I go over what I'm doing in my garden in hopes that uh, I can help you out with your gardening endeavors. Guys, we are so close to, to being monetized here on the channel. We're like 50, 75 subs away from being monetized. And that's thanks to you guys. So if you hadn't already, hit the like button, hit the sub button. Uh, any money that we make off of YouTube early on, I want to put it right back into the channel. I'm filming with a, a mic from Amazon and my cell phone camera, literally. Uh, so uh, I want to up the game, provide better content for you guys. So uh, that would be very much appreciated. Let's talk about what I'm doing in the garden in the month of August. So let's start with annuals. Annuals are starting to fade a little bit. They're, they look a little leggy. They're not as nice and tight as they were earlier in the growing season, but that's okay. We're getting towards the end of summer, August into September. Um, we expect to see some of that. I'm still alternating every other week uh, liquid feed, so miracle Grow, one week, and then the next week um, I'm coming back with that humic acid uh, so alternating back and forth with those and I'm having really good results the hanging baskets they look pretty good uh, my potted plants you can kind of see off my left hand shoulder here there's some salvia still looking pretty good the annuals that are in the ground they're looking good as well I'm watering those every day okay um, it's, it's been really hot here again I'm in North Alabama uh, I'm on the, the line between like 7B and 8A. And so we get some long, hot summers here. And, and what I have to do is water those annuals every day. So I'm watering every day. I'm either fertilizing once a week or humic acid once a week. So every other week we're doing fertilizer, uh, miracle Grow, And then every other week we're, we're coming in with humic acid. And, and those results are, are self-evident and some of this b-roll film that i've added in with the annuals let's talk about perennials for a minute on my perennials i'm starting to deadhead some things uh, for example daylily stalks that have not produced a seed pod i save my seed pods and i grow those seeds out i crossbreed daylilies to try to come up with new stuff if you're not saving your seed you can pull them all up uh, it's not essential that you do it. It just looks better as opposed to having those dead stalks sticking up. I'm also uh, deadheading things like Shasta daisies. Uh, I'm, I'm deadheading uh, some Rudbeckias right now. They're, they're right at peak, but as some of those blooms fade out, I'm, I'm going ahead and, and pulling some of those off in an effort to try to get those to bloom again. Uh, if you pull those uh, spent flowers off, what you're doing is that energy that was going to go to produce a seed will go into producing a new flower. So you can almost get them, or you can get them to bloom twice in a growing season if you deadhead those. The ones that I'm not um, deadheading right now are my echinacea. I have some golden finches uh, that come in every evening and they feed on those seeds. Uh, so I'm trying to leave those up for the, the golden finches. They're real pretty birds, uh, and evidently they key in on this as a food source. So I'm leaving those. I'm not deadheading my echinacea, but everything else, I, I'm starting to deadhead back just a little bit. Um, last thing on our perennials. The pollinators have been all over the perennials the past two or three weeks. Bees moths, butterflies, you, you name it, dozens of species out here uh, on the flowers. And that's been real fun to watch uh, the, the local pollinator community coming in and, and seeing what's in and around this area. Uh, moving on to shrubs, what am I doing with my shrubbery right now? If you have not pruned your azaleas, your forsythias, your rhododendrons, any of those that bloom early spring, it's too late. Don't do it. Let, let me step back one step. You can do it, but you're not going to have any flowers in the spring. Those flower buds are set and they'll go through winter. And then once it starts to warm up a little bit, they'll open up. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm not pruning anything like that. What am I pruning? I'm going around and just lightly pruning things like boxwoods. Uh, my boxwoods have kind of put on a new little shot of growth and I'm just going in and taking off the wild hairs off of the boxwoods. Uh, things like lower petalum, same thing. Not a big prune at all. Just going in and lightly pruning. Also, uh, you could get away with lightly pruning your hollies as well. Things like Nellie R. Stevens, Oakleaf Holly. If you haven't pruned those, you can go in and lightly prune those and kind of shape those guys up a little bit. And you should be okay in terms of having some berries on some of those hollies come winter because they, they're going to set their fruit on one-year-old wood, not the new wood that has just come out this year. So as long as you lightly prune, you should be okay and you, you should have some berries uh, pop up in the winter. Uh, what else am I doing in the garden? Let's talk about turf for a minute. I'm mowing my turf at a height of about two and a quarter to two and a half inches. I started about an inch and a half in spring and I, I raise it up to about an inch and three quarters and then two inches, two and a quarter, and then two and a half. Why am I doing that? I'm, I'm letting that turf grow up to try to preserve water in the soil layer. So uh, the, the turf's come in really good this year. We've been fortunate, we've had a lot of rain. I want to preserve that water layer. So if I'm cutting it down at like an inch, inch and a half, uh, what I'm doing, I'm letting that, that solar radiation, that heat get down on the topsoil. It's going to evaporate that soil out faster as opposed to if it had a little bit of growth over the top of it. Um, so I am mowing a little bit higher and then when we get into the fall, what I'll do is bring that mower deck back down a little bit. Uh, but for right now, I want to be mowing at the max height that I can mow at. Guys, thanks for watching. As always, uh, this is not possible without you guys. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the sub button. It really helps us out. We're so, 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 so close to being monetized here. And I want to take any funds that we get and put that back into this channel. All right. Once again, this is the Plant Doctor. We'll see you next time.